Hello, this is Sarthak Sagal once again with business videos for you. I said that I will make videos in pair, but as time is less, it's just one day left. So I will be making uh, videos in a pair of three, and as a result, you will be benefited. These three videos will be consisting of three chapters, namely principles of management, organizing, and staffing. And the next three will be the remaining one. So let's not beat about the bush and start with the topic. The first chapter for today is principles of management. When I talk about principles, there are two principles, one in school and one in the course. And these principles has have universal validity. And when I say universal validity, I mean by that they are applied everywhere. Like scientific principles of Newton, these are applied everywhere. But I doubt that whether these management principles are applied everywhere or not. So we will study this in detail, what exactly these principles are, what are their characteristics and we will distinguish few principles that is management father and Taylor who is scientific father of scientific principles and he has some techniques as well. So let's start the topic. Management principles are statements of fundamental truth which act as a guideline for managerial decisions. So these are basis by which we can take managerial decisions. And because they, these are some characteristics like they have validity and they are based on the base of test and trial. Like experiments are done and on that basis, some extent they are applied and some extent they are not. It depends on situation to situation. So some of the scientific techniques and principles of Taylor are as follows. First is functional form mention. It says that, uh, that the total work is divided into four departments with several heads and as a result it is an extension to the principle of fail that is division of work. Coming on to the second one, standardization. Um, in controlling chapter we said the first process was setting up standards. Similarly, when we want that the work should be simplified, first we have to decide a standard that what is the standard we want to achieve and the work should be simple and should be standardized means to the best quality, quantity and size. Third is simplification of work. As I discussed, simplification means to simplify the work. Choose the best method by which you can do the work in a best uh, simple way and best efficient way. And when I say efficient, I mean by that the minimum cost. Fourth is fatigue study. Fatigue study says giving employees proper rest intervals so that they are not tired and monitoring their movements that after what time span they are tired and as a result after that span give them rest intervals so that when they come back to work they are full energized. So fatigue study talks about rest intervals. Now come on to method study. It is adopting the best method which you have been adopting earlier and keeping it the same. If you are keeping it homogeneous then only it can work because if you change method time to time then you won't able to compare the current performance with the past performance. Time study. Um, time study refers to first taking out the time what is being taken by the workers for doing a particular task and then dividing that by number of persons. What comes out to be is a standard time and there is an instrument or a watch which helps us to find out that mean time that is stopwatch and that is time study for you and when I say motion study, motion study refers to eliminating the unproductive movements because there are two types of movements one is productive and other is unproductive when employees while their time so this is with the help of movie camera that to eliminate the unproductive movements then what we do? We do motion study. Then it is work study. Work study is doing the best work in the right manner in the best possible way. Very simple. Differential piece weight system. You are efficient, I am inefficient. So why I should be paid equivalent to you? That study says if you are given a target to achieve 100 and you produce 120, you are an efficient worker, you are an effective worker, you should be paid more. And on the contrary, target was 100, I achieved 80. So I should receive less. So this is what is differential piece based system. 
distributing wages on the base of efficiencies if you are efficient you will be paid more if you are not efficient like me you will be paid less last is mental revolution mental revolution says that it is not about mental employees and management have two different opinions employees begin say workers workers and management don't trust each other they don't like each other so developing a positive attitude among each other and creating harmony among them is what for you mental revolution now four tech, four principles of taylor are science not rule of thumb do not just go by hit and trial or by intuitions you should have a logical reasoning or a scientific inquiry about that matter if you are not logically correct and there is no scientific inquiry behind that then you shouldn't come to a conclusion science not rule of thumb rule of thumb here signifies intuition and hit and trial method you can't just draw a conclusion just based on your intuitions you need to have a logical reasoning for that and a scientific inquiry second and third are very similar it is all about like mental revolution workers and management develop a atmosphere of harmony and make them to work together so that they don't think of themselves only they think on the organization as a whole because if they uh, remove their individual objectives and think for organization welfare then their individual objectives will automatically be achieved and that is only when they can work with cooperation because if they are working with cooperation then harmony will be there and if harmony is there then what will be there cooperation and when cooperation is there then they will achieve group results as a result if organization is reaping out profits they will automatically make their individual objectives being achieved last but not the least is that development of workers to the greatest efficiency in prosperity um in ramayan it was told lord hanuman forgot all his powers somebody told him that you are powerful similarly making employees realize that they should perform to the best of their abilities and as a result provide them proper training and development programs so that they enrich their skills and they perform to the best of their ability and prosperity so these were four principles of taylor who is father of scientific management now coming on to fear f w taylor frederick winslow taylor father of management principles he has coined 14 principles and they are very interesting we can apply in the in our lives also and normally to a student do this in their like board practicals they give a project on that so these are very interesting we start with the first one division of work divide the total work into small small parts and give a particular work to that person who is specialized in that divide the work into small small parts and give that person that work who specialized in that that is what that achieves specialization and efficiency second is authority and responsibility authority means power to take a decision if you are a monitor in the class you have the power to take a decision responsibility means obligations or duty to perform a task what does feol say feol says excess of everything is bad and there should be a balance between both so this is what is authority and responsibility third is discipline discipline means do's and don'ts which every organization every employee has to follow irrespective of levels of management top middle or lower everybody has to follow that irrespective of level of management you are you have to be disciplined and if you violate that you would be penalized for that so that is what discipline is for you unity of command um one senior would give command to one subordinate that means that if a junior is getting instruction from several bosses he will be confused there would be chaos so it's best that one junior gets order just from one senior or from one boss so what is unity of command one boss will give order to only one junior so that he does not get confused unity of direction very simple there are different departments in organization they should work in a synchronization manner so that they are well directed towards achievement of organization objective every department has their own goals but they are working for an organization and if they are well directed to achieve an organization objective then only organization will achieve its goal so work in that direction which is leading to organizational goal achievement 
subordination of individual interest to general interest leave your interest aside think for the organization if organization will achieve its goal you will automatically achieve your individual objectives if organization is getting more profit you would be getting higher in salary you would be getting bonuses you will be getting gifts diwali gifts etc remuneration of persons you should be given fair wages competitive wages and the wages should be based on the base of minimum wage act that is they shouldn't be less and should be such that you uh, meet out with your family requirements centralization and decentralization centralization refers to concentration of power in few hands only that is top level management and when there is evenly distribution of power among all levels of management it refers to decentralization centralization is normally for small companies and decentralization is normally for large companies scalar chain very interesting point there is a triangle type in which each person will follow an order like you want to purchase a bike you ask your father to purchase one you didn't ask your mom mom will say how dare you didn't ask me similarly is the management you have to follow step by step d will ask c c will ask b b will ask a and it goes on but it's a triangle and on one side there is one department other side there is another department if two persons of same post i repeat if two persons of same post want to communicate any information then what would they do they would communicate that urgent information and that is called gang plan that is called what gang plan next is order things should be properly placed in a right order so that employees don't find it difficult to find that that is what is order place things properly so that employees don't find it a problem to locate things and will make them easier for their production equity treat people equally irrespective of their caste sex religion etc because when we do biasness when we do discrimination it creates a inferiority complex amongst employees so treat everyone equally is what is equity stability of tenure of personnel what happens in private jobs and i am biggest victim of that that i do jobs of like one year and then i want experiences of several jobs and there's a talk of town that um he stays only for one year but if a job owner promises that you would be here for at least 3 years prove your worth the last school i was in i produced results of commerce first time in school 98.2% 98% 97.8% respectively and an aggregate of economics was 92.5 so result was awesome but after that due to some technicalities i had to leave the school and so this is what is that when you are stable in organization and organization trusts you then only you can grow so stability is the biggest factor nowadays in private jobs that is why youth is migrating to government jobs i was getting an option of government job but i think it better to train people to achieve government job rather to be just an government employee initiative initiative means when people when employees give suggestion and if their suggestion work for the welfare of employees then what should you do then you should encourage them you should give them several gifts you should give them incentives so that next time also they give you good suggestions esprit de corps unity is strength and it says that results can only be achieved through group activity or team work and when you focus on a single thing they can't be achieved so what does esprit de corps says unity is strength and results can only be achieved through group efforts not by individual efforts so these results what i told but not by me these were the efforts of students i was just a mentor a guiding light i just showed the pathway and they did their best they performed because teachers have a good frame of respect if students do well it students they do well and if a student fails is the blame of a teacher so it's best that if students do well it's students and if they do bad it's student because 
स्टूडेंट आर द बिगेस्ट एसेट द पेरेंट्स आर गिविंग देयर वर्ड्स टू अस दे आर गिविंग द प्रीशियस एसेट्स टू अस टू शेप देयर फ्यूचर्स सो दिस इज माय हॉबी दिस इज माय पैशन आई वांट ईच एंड एवरी स्टूडेंट टू प्रॉस्पर इन देयर लाइफ इररिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द परसेंटेज दे गेट मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो इज ऑर्गेनाइजिंग व्हेन आई से ऑर्गेनाइजिंग आई मीन बाय दैट ग्रुपिंग आइटम्स और थिंग्स ऑफ सेम नेचर एंड फॉर्मिंग अ डिपार्टमेंट But what is the definition? Organizing is to provide a business with everything essential for its functioning. That is, tools, raw materials, machinery, personnel, providing everything essential for its functioning. That is what raw material, tools, machinery, personnel, etc. And what is the organization process? First, same, exactly as division of work. Identify what is the work and divide the work. and experts will do that work any person who is specialized in the particular work will do that work which will result to specialization and efficiency second point is that group jobs of same nature and form a department group jobs of similar nature and form a department if i am not wrong if i am a boy and i go to a girl section to purchase some things like people will hit me they'll say are you crazy man why because being a man i am going to ladies department similarly it said group the jobs of same nature and form a department when you go to big bazaar or when you go to any mall there are separate section for kids for men for ladies etc similarly group the jobs and department according to the types assignment of duties tell the roles what are your roles and that roles include job description and job specification which tells you the minute details that what are the details of the job what is the job offer what are your timings when can you take leave what is your job responsibility so this is what is about job description and job specification and last not the least is establishing reporting relationship a junior has to report to somebody or the stay senior so it should be clear that who is the immediate senior and who the junior or subordinate has to report so this is what is the organizing process for you and when i say it is being divided into two parts one is functional the other part is divisional functional says when organizational structure oh organizational structure what do you mean by that it's a framework within which the whole organization works like ceo board of directors all five functions what is that that is what is organizational structure and when i say span of management i mean by that how many persons a manager can manage effectively is called span of management and when i talk about functional structure i mean by that when organizational structure is divided on the basis of functions it is called functional structure and when a organizational structure is divided on the basis of variety of products or we can say product lines then what it is it is called divisional structure so if i ask you if a firm is a conglomerate it deals in more than one type of product uh, which structure would you adopt your answer should be divisional one and if it is on the base of functions so what is the answer for you functional structure because in board's case study comes to identify which structure is adopted here so if it's on the base of functions it should be functional if it's on the base of product it is divisional now the last topic for this chapter is delegation of authority um uh, what smart people do is that they delegate the work to the juniors because if you can do the all work by yourself then you are a fool because you have a juniors you can delegate the work so that they win the biggest rich lads of the world what they do they delegate the work they just do the white collar jobs and they delegate the work accordingly and when they delegate the work they have three elements for that first is responsibility duty to perform a task second is authority power to take decisions because when you are having responsibility you are given a power like i said you are the monitor of the class it's your duty it's your responsibility and you have the power to take any decision which is for the benefit of the class third is accountability accountability means answerable for a given task If there is lot of noise in the class, and the class teacher, who shall I ask? The monitor. So if you are answerable for a given task, that is what is accountability. So this was a sum of organizing. 
And moving on to the last one, that is staffing. And when I talk of staffing, I mean by that, it has a very tough definition and you will take like many hours to learn, but I will try my level best to make it simple. Um, if I say, when you were told this is a wrong thing to do and this is a right thing to do, which thing you choose? You chose the wrong thing. Why? Because normally what happens, we are tempted to do or try that particular thing once and adopt that right path later on. But at the end we realize that that right path was difficult. But if we would have adopted that right path, we would have gained success. So I want four right. That is take four take. Right, 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 right. And I want to make fill in the blanks. Staffing refers to selecting the right person for the right job at the right time at the right place. What does staffing mean? Selecting the right person for the right job at the right time at the right place. This is what is staffing now. And like I want to have just a small brief how staffing came into picture. Earlier there was concept of HRM. The concept earlier was personal management. But then came HRM and staffing. Personal management just took employees as a tool to achieve their means. And they were not given importance. They were like donkeys to make their work being done. But what happened? Somebody told somebody that among four M's, men, money, machine, material, what is the most important one? Some guest machine, some said money, some said material. But you, the wise student, said men. Because without men, nothing can be done. There is no men, machinery can't be operated. No men who will utilize money. If there is no men, how they will make proper utilization of material. So men was the most important one. And then the concept came, HRM. Human as an important resource for managing things. I repeat, human resource management. Human as an important resource for managing things. We want to grow an organization. You should hire best human resource. And what are human resource? You, people, employees. What are they? Human resource. So staffing process says, first is an estimating manpower requirement. Estimating manpower requirement means how many employees you need for the job. Like if there are four vacant jobs, you need four people. And what type of people you want. So estimating manpower requirement has two parts, workload and workforce. And what they say? Identifying what number of employees you want and what type you want. And make sure that either of the employees is neither overburdened or underburdened. Second is recruitment. Recruitment is attracting more and more people for filling up vacant positions. I give an example. For example, the job I am doing, I need the job. There will be a vacancy. And school will publish in the newspaper. And maximum people will apply for that job. So they will invite applications, take money from them like 100 rupees each. And if 1000 teachers come, what they are collecting? 1000 into 100, 1 lakh rupees they are collecting. So what is that being done? Attracting more and more people for filling up vacant positions. What I am saying? Attracting, stimulating more and more people for filling up vacant positions. And when I say selection, what I mean by that? Selection means chalking out the average ones. Selecting the best appropriate candidate for the job is selection. That is why recruitment is positive process. We don't say anybody no, but in selection, we have to reject all to select one. So that is what selection. That is why it is referred to as a negative process. Next is placement and orientation. You are studying MBA in a college, you got job. What is that? Placement. And what is orientation? In that job, you were made familiar or acquainted with the previous employees, the old ones. What is that? Is orientation. When new employer meets the old ones, that is what is orientation. Training and development. Training and development means training is just enhancing your skills to make you a skilled worker so that you do the job with more perfection and you are more skillful. And when I say development, it means developing a personality on a holistic view because development is for managerial class people. And when I say development, I mean development of personality so that your personality is groomed and as a result, this is through seminars and conferences. There are two types of recruitments. One is internal source, 
the other is external source and the internal source there are two paths first is transfer second is pro promotion transfer means from one department to other department you are shifted there is no hike in salary and there is no change of division like no status you were at the same post you got the different department that is what is transfer and in promotion you are designated a much bigger post like clerk or a post of accountant or you become finance officer and he had hike in salary as well but a hike in position as well so this is what is promotion for you and when i say external sources internal are within the organization we don't want outside people to join in but when we don't have internal good choices we would look after for outside people and when i say outside people there are four ways first is direct recruitment direct recruitment and factory gate is not the same thing outside the factory gate it is written pn required electrician required guard required they would directly apply to the factory and they will get the job if they are selected so that is what is direct recruitment or factory gate this is for mainly small scale jobs or small collar jobs what is casual callers casual caller means uh, like i want a job once i leave that i would call an institution and say i want a job they will say come and apply and if there is no vacancy they will say we will keep your resume and if there is a vacancy we will intimate you and let's say after 6 months there is a vacancy then they will contact all the probable candidates who are given the cvs and through casual callers if they want a particular candidate they will take an interview and on that basis they will select one so if you casual call also and submit your documents and then later on they have a vacancy they will hire you so it's best not to spoil yourself if you don't have a job then don't worry because in future if they have a job they will offer you because you only drop your resume and not me so it's best to catch the opportunities because opportunity knock your doors twice you have to wait for the opportunity now comes selection process like definition i told you earlier it's an active process is talking out the average ones and selecting the best one for the job who can perform the job to the best ability and you think he is the best what is selection process for you selection process means the first point says preliminary screening like in bank exams we have pre paper and main main paper in admissions it said those persons who will get less than 60% won't sit in the interview similarly a selection process for you it's a pre condition example anybody securing 60% less will not get admission in level so this is what is first preliminary condition so we will screen out those candidates who are not meeting up with the eligibility criteria second is selection test it it contains iq test it contains knowledge test it contains skill test it contains the job content test so these all tests are being taken to evaluate the depth of knowledge you possess in your job content third is employment interview in which a panel of experts sit and what they do they interview you they ask random questions and you have to answer that and if you pass to this interview then what goes next they will check your references and background they will ask references from true person and that to guested post who tell about your character and what caliber you possess and once like they pass on good comments because obviously the references you are giving will obviously pass good comments only then you will go on to a selection decision and if you are being selected then you would be medically examined by medical examined that whether you possess the medical stamina to do a job of 8 to 10 hours or not last is they will offer you job it's up to you to accept it or reject it if you accept it they will give you contract of employment and if you reject it your choice somebody else will get it so if you accept that job offer you will get a contract of employment it contains all the details but if you reject it somebody else will get that training and development i discussed earlier training means enhancing skills so that you become a skilled worker that is for technicians and small post 
but development means development of personality on a holistic bigger picture so that you are groomed to such an extent that you perform to the zenith and that is through seminar and conferences last but not the least two types of training one is on the job second is off the job on the job training is when you are doing a particular job and while doing a particular job what you are doing while doing a particular job you are being given training that is called on the job training example is orientation training if any new machinery has come they will educate you how to use that and they will tell you the features the pros and cons that is what is orientation when new products are being launched what is being done orientation and that is in the job duration only you don't have to go to some other place you will do a particular job and within that span only you will be given training so that you become well versed with that particular new launch product second is off the job training last but not the least off the job training refers to um, taking you to a completely new environment making you work on to a dummy machinery like if i learned a car i learned through second hand car when i started to operate on a machinery first they made me work on a dummy machinery when i studied journal first i made journal in a rough journal so this is what is all about vegetable school they first make a create a artificial environment they make you work there and when you, when you are well versed with that then what happens then they take you to the actual environment and then chances of errors are minimized so this is what is vegetable school so these were the three chapters we covered principles of management organizing and staffing if you do like the video please press the like button and if you have not subscribed the channel please do subscribe now my next video will contain the remaining three chapters that is marketing management financial market and the last one you have to guess because you have to watch the other videos as well for that so hope you um, like watch my videos and subscribe the channel i want you comment so that i know the areas where i can improve god bless you meet you in the next video thank you